Today I'll be talking about center mass and momentum. You may be asking yourself, self, what does center mass have to do with conservation momentum? Well, in an isolated system, the total linear momentum doesn't change. Therefore, the velocity of the center of mass does not change. Now you may be asking yourself, well, what a center of mass? Let's look at that a little bit more closely. The center of mass is a point that represents the average location of the total mass of a system. So let's say we have a two mass system, M1 and M2. And we have some arbitrary reference point that I've chosen is right here. M1 is, list, is x1 distance away from the arbitrary point, where M2 is x2 distance away from the arbitrary point. Now, where would I have to put all the mass? these two added together, how far out or where would I have to locate it to be the same as this mass out this distance and this mass out this distance. In other words, here's the mass 1 out x1, here's the mass 2 out x2. Where would I have to put both the masses, an object with both the masses, how far out would I have to put it to be equal to that? Okay, And that distance is called the center of mass. So all I did was take the center mass and solve for it. And that would just be taking this term here and divided by the two masses together. Now obviously, this is only a two mass system. If you had three or four, you would have you would have all the individual terms added up and divided by the total masses, and that would still be the center of mass. All right, see if you understand it a little bit more. Let's look at an example. If these two masses are equal, wouldn't the center of mass just be right in the middle? Because where would you locate something that would equate to having m1 out this distance, m2 out this distance? Where could you put both of them? Well, right in the middle. Now, let's assume that this one's only 4, this one's 10. Well, obviously, where would the center of mass go? would have to go closer to the 10 kilogram object. All right? All right. Suppose the two particles in the system are moving, as they would during a collision. Can we determine an equation for change in center of mass? Well, certainly. We could take our original equation. Instead of having x's in it, we'll have delta x's. So that would be the change in center of mass. So how far each of the center masses would move. Now, we could divide each of these delta x's by the corresponding time. And the time is going to be the same because the collision occurred for the same amount of time. And we know that distance divided by time is velocity. So each of these terms can be termed, turned into a velocity. So this would give us the velocity of the center of mass. All right. In an isolated system, the total linear momentum doesn't change. Therefore, the velocity of the center of mass doesn't change. So the um, wherever the center of mass was going before the collision it has to continue in the same direction at the same speed after the collision. OK? So let's try a problem with this. What I'm going to do is I want to go back and look at the two ice skaters once more. We did this in a previous video, but I thought it would be important to look at it again. So we have the two ice skaters pushing off each other. And we have the numbers. Uh, the girl is 54 kilograms. The guy is 88. The girl is going to move off to the right with a speed of 2.5. And we're going to find the speed of the man pushing backwards the other way. And we know the initial momentum is 0 because they weren't moving. And we solve for the final velocity of the guy. And we came out to be negative 1.5. Now, why am I looking at this again? Because I'm curious to see what happens to the velocity of the center of mass during this collision. It should remain the same, because what's the velocity of the center of mass here? Well, zero, because it's not moving. So after the collision, the center of mass should remain at zero. 
So using our equation, it should come out to be zero. So let's see if it does. Okay, we have the 88 kilogram N moving off to the left with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. That would be negative because it's moving to the left. The 54 kilogram girl moving to the right at 2.5 divided by the two masses added together. And it comes, comes out to approximately zero so that we see that the velocity of the center of mass did not change during the collision. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the velocity is always going to be zero. It could be moving, and it's going to stay at whatever speed it was moving. Um, let's say both these ice skaters were moving to the right at 2 meters per second, and all of a sudden they push off each other. They exploded away from each other. If you did the same calculations over again, a, the center of mass should stay the velocity center mass should stay at that 2 meters per second, even after they explode it. 